Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for November 11th and 10th, 2022. In Hoi Pierre, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark attended the opening of the exhibition entitled Out of Chaos, Between Rome's Eagles and Odin's Ravens, held at the Mosgard Museum. Out of Chaos, Between Rome's Eagles and Odin's Ravens shines a light on one of Europe's most exciting and complicated periods When the great Roman Empire collapsed in the West, new warrior aristocracies and kingdoms arose and the foundations were laid for Europe as we know it today. The exhibition covers a period from approximately 300 to 600 AD, i.e. the time between the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the Viking Age. A time which is also called the Migration Period, due to large wars, refugee flows, and displacements. The theme of the special exhibition thus fits into the series of special exhibitions at the Mosgard Museum, where the ambition is to give the museum's guests knowledge about major world historical contexts. The exhibition gives an insight into the chaos from which Europe was born. In a statement, the director of the Mosgard Museum, Mr. Mads Holst, said of the exhibition, quote, It is one of the biggest crises in the history of Europe, which we take up in the exhibition. Most of the continent was in a violent disintegration, and out of it grew a multitude of different peoples and identities that we can still recognize in today's Europe. We therefore hope that the exhibition will be able to provide a deep historical perspective on some of the differences and tensions that still characterize our time. It is also a perspective on how long historical consequences major crises can have, something that is unfortunately very current." For the exhibition, the Mosgard Museum borrowed archaeological objects from, among other things, museums in Sweden, Spain, Romania, and Hungary, in addition to the National Museum in Denmark. Out of Chaos Between Rome's Eagles and Odin's Ravens will be open to the public on November 12, 2022. In Lillestrøm, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mette Marit of Norway as High Patron of the Norwegian Scouting Association, officially opened the 2022 Scouting Assembly. Held every two years, the Scouting Assembly gathers scouts from all over Norway to, quote, deal with cases, make plans, and pass laws, end quote. During today's opening, the Crown Princess presented the Flamen Award to positive active scouts and young leaders who have shown an outstanding commitment and have made a, quote, great effort for the scouting cause. Overall, the award is presented to an individual in recognition and motivation to continue to make a positive difference. End quote. In Paris, Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan participated in the opening session of the fifth edition of the Paris Peace Forum held at the Palais Brognard. During the opening session, held under the theme Writing Out the Multi Crisis, Her Majesty the Queen gave a speech with the President of the Republic of Colombia, Mr. Gustavo Petro, and the Executive Director of the World Food Program, Mr. David Beasley. The Paris Peace Forum gathers representatives from states, international organizations, businesses, development banks, foundations, and NGOs from around the world to meet and to turn solutions into concrete actions. In Palma de Mallorca, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain attended the opening of the 54th edition of the annual conference of the Comité Internacional de Museos y Colecciones de Arte Moderno, held at the S. Baluar Museum. The Comité Internacional de Museos y Colecciones de Arte Moderno, also known as the CIMAM, is an organization affiliated with the International Councils of Museums, a network of more than 35,000 members and museum professionals created in 1946, representing the world community of museums. The CIMAM is the only worldwide network of experts in modern and contemporary art museums. The members of the CIMAM are directors and curators who work in museums, collections, and archives of modern and contemporary art. After the opening, His Majesty the King participated in a roundtable discussion entitled Historical Perspective of the 60 Years of the CIMAM. 
In Brussels, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians attended a military ceremony for the 100th anniversary of the commemoration of the unknown soldier and in honor of those who passed during World War I, World War II, and soldiers who died during peacekeeping operations since 1945. In Stratfordshire, their royal highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, attended the National Memorial Arboretum's Armistice Day service held at the Armed Forces Memorial. According to the newspaper Heart Midland News, after the service, the Duke and Duchess were, quote, invited to finish off the planting of new oak, elm, and lime trees at the National Arboretum, which is part of the Queen's Green Canopy, a nationwide initiative to plant millions of trees in her honor, end quote. On November 10, 2022, in Anderlecht, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians visited the 20,000 square meter Circular Production and Innovation Center, known as the Circularium. Located on a former automobile manufacturing site, the purpose of the Circularium is to create an, quote, innovative, attractive, and sustainable place for a new type of entrepreneurship and urban economy, end quote. The 30 projects that have settled on the site all respect the principle of short circuits and circularity while playing an attractive role in the district, such as participating in various cultural activities. During his visit, His Majesty the King visited three shops, including the Free Shop, where customers can take items away for free on the condition that they write a thank you note to the person who donated the object to the store. In Madrid, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain held an audience with the United States Congressmen and women participating in the Transatlantic Capital to Capital Exchange Congress held at Palacio de la Zazuela. The biennial four-day Transatlantic Capital to Capital Exchange Congress is organized by the Ribbon Society and the Franklin Center for Global Policy, immediately following the congressional elections in one European capital at a time. During the meeting, some 30 members of Congress from both parties hold thematic meetings with counterparts from the country of destination. Representatives of major U.S. companies are also in attendance at the meeting. In New York City, His Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg, accompanied by the Minister of the Economy, Mr. Franz Foyette, and the Deputy Minister of Luxembourg, Ms. Paulette Lenert, concluded their four-day official visit to the United States. Yesterday, the hereditary Grand Duke and the ministers attended the launch of the Benelux Catalyst Acceleration Program, met with the United Nations Deputy Secretary General, Ms. Amina Mohammed, and attended the Luxembourg Space Finance Event. On Wednesday, the hereditary Grand Duke and the ministers participated in the Luxembourg Private Equity and Venture Capital Association Conference held at the Maison du Luxembourg. Following the conference, Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume and Minister Foyette presented Mr. Michel Franck and Mrs. Tony Dussac of the Luxembourg American Chamber of Commerce with the Grand Ducal Order of the Crown of Oak in recognition of their active contribution to the development of economic ties between Luxembourg and the United States. In the evening, the Hereditary Grand Duke and the ministers attended the 10th edition of the Luxembourg American Business Award organized by the Luxembourg American Chamber of Commerce. In Luxembourg City, their Royal Highnesses Grand Duke Only and Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg visited the School of Business and Management. During their visit, the Grand Ducal couple met with professors, administrative staff, and students in which discussions focused on entrepreneurship and sustainable development. In the evening, the Grand Duchess attended a play entitled Good Girls, written for the event ESH 2022, the European Capital of Culture, held at the Ariston in ESH sur Alzette. Meanwhile, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg attended Team Litzeburg Night 2022. The evening started with retrospects on recent events Luxembourgish athletes participated in over the years and ended with an athlete highlight reel of those who will participate in the upcoming Paris 2024 Olympics. In Den Haag, 
Their Majesties King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands attended a luncheon in honor of the President of the Republic of Italy, Mr. Sergio Mattarella's, not mozzarella, state visit to the Netherlands. The luncheon was hosted by the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mr. Mark Root. In Copenhagen, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark presided over the opening of the two-day conference entitled Open World, Open Science and Global Dangers, held inside the Queen's Hall at the Black Diamond at the Royal Danish Library. Organized by the University of Copenhagen in collaboration with the Royal Danish Academy of Sciences and Letters, the Open World Conference is an interdisciplinary conference about open science and global dangers where attendees discuss the dilemmas of openness in research and research collaboration. According to a press release, the conference will feature a variety of speakers in which they will address topics such as the, quote, philosophical and ethical challenges of gene editing, artificial intelligence, and quantum computing, different forms of open science such as science diplomacy, citizen science, and open software, the nuclear arms race, historical perspectives on openness and secrecy in computer and cybersecurity, as well as science policy making and risk regulation mechanisms. End quote. During the opening of the conference, Crown Prince Frederick gave a speech entitled An Open World. Meanwhile, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mary of Denmark continued her two day visit to Zanzibar. The purpose of Crown Princess Mary's visit to Zanzibar is to participate in the High Level Commission International Conference on Population and Development, ICPD Plus 25, High Level Commission Meeting. The Crown Princess is a member of the High Level Commission. The ICPD Plus 25 works to promote reproductive health and human rights, as well as women's and girls' rights. Yesterday morning, the Crown Princess participated in a panel discussion during the launch of the 2022 report of the High-Level Commission on the Nairobi Summit on ICPD Plus 25 follow-up. On Wednesday afternoon, Crown Princess Mary visited the Sabalini Health Clinic in Zanzibar. According to a press release through funding from the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the clinic provides, quote, health care to 108 pregnant women every day sexual reproductive health and rights services, and support for GBV survivors. In Oslo, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mette Marit of Norway attended a conference entitled Is Everything Going Well? held at the DOGA. The conference, organized by the Research Council of Norway and Nordfjorsk, focused on how the pandemic has affected children and young people's mental health, living conditions, social life, and education. In Vatican City, Their Majesties King Abdullah II and Queen Rania of Jordan met with His Holiness Pope Francis at the Apostolic Palace. According to a press release via the Holy See, His Majesty the King and His Holiness discussed the need to continue to develop inter-religious and ecumenical dialogue, quote, always ensuring that the Catholic Church in Jordan may freely exercise her mission." End quote. His Majesty the King and His Holiness expressed appreciation for the good bilateral relations between the Holy See and the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, highlighting the importance of promoting stability and peace in the Middle East. His Majesty the King and His Holiness also agreed on a need to continue to preserve the status quo in the holy places in Jerusalem. In the afternoon, in London, His Majesty the King met with His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom at Buckingham Palace. In Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco participated in a panel discussion entitled Beyond Polar Bears and Penguins, Why the Ice Crisis Matters to All of Us, during the 27th United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP27. Joining the Sovereign Prince during the panel discussion were Dr. Sylvia Earle on screen, UNICEF Youth Leader and Climate Change Activist, Ms. Sherea Casey, the Director of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Change, Professor Johan Rockstorm, and the President and Co-Founder of Global Choices, Mrs. Sally Rainey. The Sovereign Prince also participated in a three-panel discussion held under the theme, Swimming the Talk, 
Scaling Up Action to Tackle Climate Change in the Mediterranean Region, Monaco's Engagement, held inside the Mediterranean Pavilion. The event was co-organized by the Prince Albert II of Monaco Foundation and the Union for the Mediterranean in connection with the COP27. In his opening speech, Prince Albert II expressed his wish for the Mediterranean of tomorrow to be, quote, the symbol of new solutions, end quote. The first panel discussion was dedicated to highlighting some of the main drivers of change resulting from climate change. The second panel addressed the potential of conservation to reduce the impacts of climate change through collective action. The last panel highlighted the multiple solutions involving land-sea interactions and the need to implement integrated approaches to enhance adaptation to the effects of climate change. In the evening, Prince Albert II met with the Prime Minister of Egypt, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the President of the COP27, as well as other representatives of the Egyptian government, during the third edition of the Ocean Innovators Platform. The Sovereign Prince also met with various world leaders, including the United States Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, Mr. John Kerry. In Muscat, His Highness Saeed Bilarab bin Haytham Al Saeed of Amman chaired the first meeting of the Supervisory Committee of the Amani Promising Startups Program. The program aims to strengthen the system of companies based on innovation and advanced technology in the Sultanate of Amman. The program also aims to contribute to the dissemination of culture of startups in educational institutions and to enhance the community awareness of their importance and comes in line with the Oman Vision 2040 within the priority of economic diversification and financial sustainability. In London, Her Majesty the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom attended the 94th year of the Field of Remembrance at Westminster Abbey. And finally, last evening in London, Her Royal Highness Princess Maria Olympia of Greece attended the Harper's Bazaar Women of the Year Awards 2022 in partnership with Armani Beauty, held at Claridge's Hotel. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Saturday, November 12th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful Friday evening and a great weekend. And also, I'd like to apologize for not uploading a video yesterday. Um, some of you may or may not know, 10 months out of the year, I live in a beautiful remote beach town in Panama. And for the past seven days, we have been having severe thunderstorms and rainstorms. It's been insane. And as a result, we've been having bad floods and landslides. And with that comes power outages. <laughs> So we haven't had power for the past 24 hours, but now we have it back. So that's why I wasn't able to upload a video. So I apologize to all of you for that. Anyway, have a wonderful evening, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.